Ambitious plans for U.S.-India technology sharing are facing hurdles even as they are unveiled. Agreements include the sale of weapons and the transfer of sensitive military technology. Washington wants to deepen ties with New Delhi to counter China's ambitions in Asia. But their future defense cooperation faces significant challenges from America's own weapons export rules. U.S. lawmakers are particularly concerned that India wants the same privileges given to Washington's allies. Despite not being one formal treaty ally itself, nor having any of the obligations, New Delhi has been also been maintaining close relations with Moscow and refusing to condemn its invasion of Ukraine. And for this, Benji Hyde joins us live from Washington, D.C. Benji, agreements on defense between the two countries announced, but already some challenges. Tell us more. Yeah, we saw a raft of measures uh, formally confirmed on Thursday uh, with the, you know, T's crossed and I's dotted. But there are still a few hurdles before these become official. And what I mean by that is, first of all, there has to be a series of them approved by Congress in the United States, normally a, uh, an institution which is bitterly divided. And secondly, as you mentioned, there are a set of regulations in the United States which make it tricky for even Washington to export arms and cooperate with its closest allies like the UK and Australia. What we're seeing is that India wants to, in some cases, not only match that, but exceed access to those sets technologies that the likes of Britain or Australia don't even have access to and are asking for that in spite of the stance, as you mentioned, when it comes to the war in Ukraine, which is still Mr. Biden's or one of Mr. Biden's most uh, important foreign policy challenges. And he's willing to forgive New Delhi's stance on that conflict and their increased relationship with Russia, buying half of what oil Moscow produces in order to collectively with India form this counter to China. But that gamble that forgiving India's stance on Ukraine will lead to a, a greater force against China comes with all these sorts of caveats, as you say, because India now want these access to these technologies, whilst, you know, at the same time trying to keep those close ties with one of America's biggest adversaries. It's a tricky line for the administration here to be towing. Well, we've seen a great deal of speeches and pageantry with Prime Minister Modi in uh, the U.S. for his first state visit, uh, a private dinner, uh, a state dinner at the White House, and addressing uh, joint Congress as well. What else is on the Prime Minister's agenda? Yeah, more pleasantries to come too. He's on his way shortly to talk with uh, a lot of business leaders, CEOs, uh, other members of the Indian diaspora. You might recall a few days ago him sitting down with Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who promises to visit India next year. This trip was uh, about agreeing deals on a number of fronts, defence, technology, business, some include, some overlapping all three of those spheres. For example, the announcement that American firm General Electric will help manufacture uh, engines for fighter jets for the Indian Air Force. And these meetings with business leaders, again, trying to reaffirm that India is a place that these American companies should invest in. Before he flies out, he's also going to be having a, a lunch with uh, Vice President Kamala Harris of Indian descent, of course, and Secretary of State Antony Blinken, fresh from his trip to China. And then Mr Modi doesn't directly return to India. In fact, he's stopping off via Egypt for bilateral talks there. Again, a sign that uh, India is trying to uh, secure ties uh, both in the Americas and Africa as it projects this image that it's a, a serious global contender on a political and economic front. Oh, thanks for that. Benji High reporting live from Washington, D.C.